Hey y'all, it's Paula with Hillbilly Orchids. Welcome back to my channel. Um, I wanted to, um, right now I want to thank um, all my new subscribers. I'm going to put a list of y'all's names up. Um, I did this past week um, get, um, actually in the last couple weeks, like I've been over the moon because I got Raquel um, as a subscriber to my channel now. And I've also gotten um, the Orchid Whisperer as a subscriber. So I was like, I was like, whoa. <laughs> I feel a little, uh, you know, <laughs> makes me feel a little puffed up, you know, to have them be watching uh, my videos. So, um, but with that said, you know, everybody, each and every one of you are very important to me, really. Um, I mean, I, I couldn't do this without y'all support um that's for sure but like i said i'm gonna i'll list y'all's names and um you know i really really appreciate all my new subscribers i mean my channel's just chiming right along and i just am so excited about it um super happy um you know i love coming on here i love talking to you guys about all this stuff and that's actually um what prompted this um discussion today um, because uh, me and Michael McCarthy, um, you know, those of you that don't know Michael, um, you know, Michael won't do videos, and I can understand why he wouldn't. Because I tell you what, it was a huge <laughs> um, adjustment for me. Like, if you go watch my very first video, you could definitely see a difference. Like, I was a nervous wreck, <laughs> to say the least. Um, so, you know, and I mean, you know that doing the the videos is just not for everybody but michael is so valued in the um comment section of, of everybody's videos because you know he just has a vast wealth of knowledge um you know and i'm blessed to say that he's a really good friend of mine so and uh, i really appreciate him um you know we do talk a lot and um this was something that did come up in one of our discussions because uh, i did that last nutrients video and um he's like you know one thing you didn't do is you didn't check the ph of the jacks two-part fertilizer and i was like well yeah um i guess i really didn't so um because like a lot of people a lot of people are adjusting um their mixes and stuff so that um your uh nutrients are in that right range so that your orchids can actually absorb it which, you know, a lot of people don't realize that, that there is a, there's an actual scale. Um, I'll try to place one up on the screen so that when we're talking about it, um, it actually shows you um, the different, uh, at the different pHs of what parts of your nutrients in your solutions are going to get to your orchids. Okay, so um, for those of you that don't really understand that, I mean, it is, it does get a little complicated and a little technical. But the chart makes it so um, so much worth it, you know, because if your pH of your nutrient mix is off, well, your plants might not be getting the calcium that they need. So, um, but, you know, and you can go back and you can, a little bug, <laughs> uh, those stinking gnats, those little uh, fungus gnats, um, you can go back and look in Rick L's videos and he will tell you, though, orchids are calcium hogs period um you can't overdo these guys on calcium you can't and i think that you know in building up their calcium um really helps make the plant stronger as well um like it, it helps keep them from bug attacks um it helps you know keep them from rot um of course you know you still have to have your added you know you have to have your your air control, you know, flow and everything in order to help keep rot down too as well. I mean, because you got a plant that, you know, is requiring moisture, requiring humidity, and those things, you know, in excess and not drying out is it's gonna do something. It's gonna cause mold, it's gonna cause rot, it's gonna cause certain things. So but what you have to have is that fine balance between are your roots soaking up the nutrients fast enough plus your air drying out the excess 
So it's a balance. It really is. But um, for the most part, a lot of fertilizers have enough buffers in them that you don't need to adjust the mix. Now, I don't know about any other um, nutrients. I've never used, like I said in the beginning, I used the liquid hydroponic nutrients, which it too had the same kind of buffers in it. Um, so that, you know, my plants were getting exactly what they were supposed to be getting. Um, it was measuring right, so, you know, I wasn't worried about what the pH actually was. And I'm finding the same thing with the jacks. Now, this right here, this jacks is, um, this is from my mixture that I just watered on Tuesday and Wednesday. <clears throat> okay, so this mix pull it closer to you I'll show you um, this mix was 219 parts per million of my Jack's two-part fertilizer okay now we've mixed that before so you know what's in it it's um it's actually I've, I've increased it now to um, 130 parts per million of calcium nitrate and um, the rest, just the 5, 12, 26, the fertilizer. And I do add um, a touch of key, sea kelp to every, every uh, watering. I don't add a lot, just, I mean, just like an ounce or something like that in 32 gallons of water. So it's not a lot. But, um, so that's basically my mix. Now, I don't add the CalMag to my solutions anymore because my calcium nitrate is calcium and the Jax also has magnesium in it so you don't have to but if you feel that your plant is lacking you can always at the end of your mix always add a little more Epsom salts or you can add a little bit of CalMag to your mixes it's not going to hurt anything and it's already mixed up so you can do it you know the only thing is is that you should never mix your calcium nitrate and your Epsom salts never mix if I do if I'm going to add Epsom salts to my mix uh, but I always mix my calcium nitrate first so I know that by the end of everything it's mixed up and then I put in my Epsom salts so that way I know that you know it's all mixed up and it won't cause that uh, that sludge so but <clears throat> that's my mix um, it was 219 parts per million now this little cup here, this is just water, um, uh, reverse osmosis water, so I can rinse my, um, my pH meter. So, um, I wish I could show you this on, like, on the video. I don't think I have a way. I might try something, um, but right now, let me, I want to rinse off this um, pH meter with RO water. Because it's got, it sits in a um, seven zero stabilizing um, agent, so it sits sits in this constantly, so that it's uh, calibrated at seven um, seven point zero. So this is a, a eco tester pH one. These testers are kind of expensive. Like I had to actually save up to get this one. But this was the one that Rick L recommended. So I of course you know I was like, well I'm getting it because um, it's the one that he always used and you don't have to fuss with mixing different calibration solutions to, to um, use this uh, meter. So, like I said, it just sits in the 7.0 and if it ever gets off whack, then you just recalibrate it to more 7.0 solution. So, see right now it's saying 7.0 or hopefully you can see that. It's saying 7.0. So, we're going to set it in here and you have to let it sit for a little bit in um, nutrient solutions because it takes a little while um, for it to actually grab hold and adjust to what the actual um, reading is. But I know what it is. Right there is actually what it actually is. I'll hit hold. <clears throat> It's actually 6.2 pH. So, um, let me see if I can um, 
see if I can find a way to get a chart. I want to I want to show you guys this. So hang on one second. Let me go see if I can do this, and I will be right back. Okay, y'all, I am back. Um, let's see if I can get this to work. <laughs> we'll try this. Um, hopefully, I can get it up close enough to the screen to um, for you guys to see this. Okay, this is a general. Um, Hydroponic nutrient solution pH on ava nutrient availability. Okay. Now, if you see, if you look, let me see if I can zoom in. Actually, I mean that's what a general chart looks like, and you can usually download your own. You know what I mean. So, um, I'm going to zoom in to right around the six, because remember mine's six two, so mine's going to be right. Let's see if I can see you guys. <laughs> I'm going to be right between 6.0 and 6.5, so more towards the 6.0 range, okay? So, <clears throat> if you look at 6.2, my, um, my nitrogen is in a good range, okay? Let me see if I can find something to point at. <laughs> we'll get this figured out, guys. We'll get this figured out. Maybe. All right. Let's do this. Because it's hard, it's so hard for me to look on screen and see what you all are seeing and hold this phone up here so you guys can see it as well. Okay, so right here is the range. Like I said, we're going to be closer to the 6 air range. So here is my nitrogen. Nitrogen is perfect. Like it's not declining or anything as of yet at 6.2. Now, phosphorus. It is, it is in the starting to decrease range, but you almost never see, I'm not saying you don't ever, but you almost never see a phosphorus deficiency in a plant. So, but we are, you know, at 6.2, we are kind of at the end of that, but it's not bad. It's not, like I said, I've never had any, any worries that I could see in my collection, so... Here's the potassium. Um, potassium's perfect. It's not dropping off yet. It's in a perfect range. Sulfur, perfect range. Calcium. Calcium's, calcium's really good at like 6.5, and it starts to decline, but it's still in a really great range right there. There's not a lot of decrease there. Not compared to like, see if you look, see how much it decreases at 5. So if you, if you decrease it, you know, it's, it's pretty good right there. It's really not bad. So then, so is it magnesium? Magnesium's right in about the same range. Oops, I went too far. We're right here. So, um, magnesium's right in about the same range. Now, iron, iron, it's good. It's not, and I'm not, you guys aren't seeing me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> iron is good. It's right there. Um, it's in a good range. Magne manganese is right there. It's in a good range. Boron, which these are all your um, your micronutrients, which is they they're really necessary. Um, and that, but they're all in good range. Your copper and your zinc as well. So, you know, if you if you want, you know, download that chart and study it and um, you know, it really gives you some ideas about where your where your ranges fall. Um, I've always been happy with Jack's. Um, Jack's definitely um, you know, has it going on as to like the buffers. Um, like I said, you can't, you cannot deny um, what it actually does. And I'll actually show you, um, I'm going to show you this because I just noticed it today. Um, I had got a, um, a piece of um, Cattleya Rex from uh, William Green. Um, he had sent me one that was having a, a black rot issue. And the smaller part of the plant was absolutely fine, but it was the bigger part that we were having to deal with. <clears throat> well, uh, I've been kind of baby in this plant because actually right now as well in um, see this is like the seedling side of the division that he cut 
Um, but we, I have been babying this plant, and I didn't, I wasn't treating it like I was my other um, plants. I was not soaking this one. I was basically wetting it because, like, uh, Rexes have a dry period, and if you watch William Green's channel right now, they are in a dry period. But I'm kind of treating this one like a seedling. But last week, for the very first time, I soaked this plant for two hours along with everybody else. I soaked all my other plants two hours. I put them each in their own pots like this. Everybody has their own mask like this, and they soak two hours in my nutrient solutions, okay? So, I just noticed this today, and actually, I'm not going to remove it because I did, um, I did just, I topped it off with some husk, but I will insert a picture of what Jack's fertilizer just did for this plant in one week. You will see the amount of branching and the new root that this, that Jack's fertilizer put out on this plant. It's phenomenal, guys, I'm telling you. I mean, I'm not just saying that. I'm not just saying that because, you know, that's just what I use. It's, I mean, it is. It's, I switch to it and I will never use anything else. And I mean, when you see the difference, it's no wonder why. But <clears throat> as we were discussing, um, I have been, um, I have been adding a little bit of oyster shell. Um, now this calcium's a little, it doesn't break down as good as other calciums, um, but um, like definitely my Fragmopedium needed that because uh, Michael McCarthy told me, he's like, I would put some in there. So I went down to the feed store um, and I got that. But I tell you, I use the Espoma Garden Lime. Now, I have been, I've been starting to, um, I mix this in, like if I'm going to repot a plant, it'll get thrown in the mix as well. I'll throw in uh, Orchiata Bark, my treated husk with cow mag, um, my perlite, my charcoal, uh, I might throw in a hand of, handful of the calcium uh, grit, and I'll throw this in too. Um, this stuff is um it comes in that's what it looks like it's pelleted um pieces and even if you don't mix it in your um in your mixes with your bark to repot you can always you know toss some sprinkle some in on top of a pot um now i do it every after every flush um, if I flush my orchids once a month and I flush that pot really good, then after I get done flushing, I go back around and everybody gets uh, some droplets of this um, garden lime because this is calcium as well. Um, if you look back here, it's actually 21% uh, uh, calcium and it also is 10% magnesium. And, uh, but it has other um, things in it too. Um, but those two things are, you know, of course, definitely important. And uh, like I said, you know, um, orchids are calcium hogs. So it's not like it's gonna hurt anything. It's actually just gonna make things better. Um, the only thing is, is I do wanna put a little um, disclaimer on there. This does not work well with moss. Um, now I have, I have crushed that or taken the fine granules and sprinkled it on mounts before um, because if there's like a small amount of moss but most generally this is alkaline and moss is acidic so they don't want to mix well together you would kind of think that this would help moss last a little bit but it can really funk up some uh, moss like it makes moss kind of funky slimy um, it, it I've seen it do some really nasty things to moss, so I really wouldn't recommend you using it on my, on moss. I do use it in husk, and um, I started to say musk husk. <laughs> Listen, we're about to get five to eight inches of snow, so they say, and I'm just not happy about it. Have I told y'all how bad I hate winter? <laughs> Have I told my friends? Have you guys heard me say how much I hate winter? <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, um, so that's basically 
<laughs> that's basically where my head is. So with that all said, y'all, um, yeah, if you have any questions, you know, um, feel free to leave them in the comments. Um, you know, if you want to talk about it, we'll talk about it in the comments. Um, please, you know, uh, feel free to ask me any questions. Um, I'd be glad to talk to you about it. But with that said, I appreciate y'all stopping by and hanging out with me. And bye for now, y'all. Till we meet again.